After heavy speculation, Oasis is finally reuniting after 15 years, announcing the Oasis Live 25 tour taking place next year. But given all of the excessive drama over the years between Liam and Noel Gallagher, can they actually make it to their reunion? Welcome back to The Logan Show. Let's talk. You know, what's interesting about this reunion is that the announcement comes on almost the exact same date as two very important milestones in the band's career. The 30th anniversary week of their debut album, Definitely Maybe, which came out on August 29th, 1994. And then one day shy, 15 years later, August 28th, 2009, the band breaks up minutes before taking the stage at a festival in Paris, and I mean literally within five minutes of going on stage. Noel Gallagher actually explained the situation a few years later when talking to NPR in 2012, saying, We were backstage waiting to go on stage to 30,000 people in Paris. The tour manager came in and said, Five minutes. We broke up within that five minutes. I'm not proud of that, but all things come to an end. I actually found these timelines that NPR and Pitchfork put together, highlighting some of the best, or worst really, uh, moments of contention between Liam and Noel Gallagher. So let's look at some of these and see if these two are actually capable of making it an entire year before their reunion before completely imploding. Starting off in April 1994, months before their debut album Definitely Maybe was even released, the band does an interview with John Harris of NME and they spend the entire time fighting with each other over the dumbest things that you could possibly imagine including the meaning of rock and roll, uh, an incident that had taken place on a ferry at one point, and even how much they hated each other. I mean, you really cannot make this stuff up. They even released the audio from that interview a year later in 95 as a single called Wibbling Rivalry, uh, which I'll put a link down below if you're unfamiliar. Absolutely hilarious stuff. And then just five months later in September of 94, literal weeks after Definitely Maybe was released, Oasis is on tour over here in the States. And during a show in LA, I guess Liam hit his brother Noel over the head with a tambourine and then spends a chunk of the show insulting not only the rest of the band, but also the audience as well. You know, the people that paid to be at the show. So Noel ends up storming off the stage and quits the band again within a month of their first album releasing. This stuff goes back to pretty much day one of Oasis. He, of course, does rejoin the band uh, later on during the tour. But anyways, Noel ends up coming back, and the whole situation was actually used as inspiration for their song, Talk Tonight. Fast forward to the spring of 95, and the band is in the studio working on their second album, What's the Story, Morning Glory. Noel is actively in studio working while Liam is, of course, at a pub, and he shows up to the studio. He brought a bunch of drunk people with him uh, from the pub, brings them to the studio, uh, much to the chagrin of Noel, who forced the randos to leave, upsetting Liam, who then attacked Noel, with Noel then hitting Liam on the head with a cricket bat. I mean, just absurd. Perhaps more interesting, though, is the follow-up to the incident years later when the cricket bat was sold at an auction after it was in the possession of author Paolo Hewitt, who wrote the authorized Oasis biography. I wish I knew how much it went for, but I couldn't find that. But uh, knowing the history of this band and obviously how huge they are, I would imagine that that cricket bat sold for quite a bit of money. Jumping ahead to probably one of the more iconic Oasis moments, in August of 96, the band is just about to tape their performance on MTV Unplugged, and at the very last second, Liam, who was complaining of a sore throat, backs out of the performance with Noel still going ahead with the taping, and then Liam ends up spending the entire duration of the performance in the audience, smoking and drinking, with a sore throat, mind you, or so he says, and heckles Noel during the entire performance for MTV Unplugged. There's footage online uh, of this, which I'll, I'll uh, link down below, but it's just really mind-boggling, the insanity of some of these stories. I mean, I, I don't know. To me, that sounds like a bit from It's Always Sunny or something. Just absolutely insane. Shortly after that, Liam backs out of a U.S. tour just before it was set to start, ends up jumping back in a few days into the run, but then the tour gets canceled two weeks in. The drama with Oasis truly never ends, and I'm sure, and kind of hoping, if I'm being honest, 
that we'll see something, maybe not, you know, shows getting canceled or something like that, but I'm definitely hoping for some good headlines uh, when they reunite. There's got to, there's definitely going to be some drama, no doubt about that. And then in 1998, the Gallagher brothers are the featured combatants on Celebrity Deathmatch, and obviously, well, not a real fight, not something that happened in real life. I have no doubt that for one, some of their real life actual fights, I'm sure ended up like what we saw on the show, at least as violent. I mean, look at what I've already talked about so far. And for two, you know, for a fact that they both have absolutely wanted to take each other out at one point uh, or another. Although, of course, in the match, they both get taken out by prop comic Gallagher. And hilariously, when that happens, the commentator says, this is a sad day indeed for fans of Beatles imitators everywhere. Then in May of 2000, again in the middle of a tour, though this time in Europe, the two brothers are, of course, out drinking in Barcelona when Liam ends up questioning the paternity of Noel's daughter, which in turn causes Noel to leave the band again, temporarily, of course, but not before he jumped on Liam and punched him repeatedly and ended up splitting his lip, but he did not return for the remainder of the tour. I believe that was Noel's second time leaving the band, and you'll end up realizing that it's typically Liam, at least in my opinion and from what I know, it's really Liam that seems to be a, a bit more of the hothead and the one that, that causes a lot of the chaos, with Noel seemingly frequently resorting to just leaving the band uh, temporarily in most cases, except for back in 09. Uh, but, you know, it's to say the very least, it really is quite an interesting dynamic that these two have. Just, my God, absolutely incredible. Now going way ahead to 2009, and like I said, we're just going through some of the highlights here. I mean, we'd be here all day long if we were dissecting this uh, moment to moment. There's just so many of them going back like 30 years now. Maybe at some point we'll do that, but not right now. However, I will link uh, both the NPR and Pitchfork timelines below if you want to check them out. But anyways, in 09, Noel is doing an interview with Q Magazine, and at one point during the interview, he goes on to say that Liam is, quote, the angriest man you'll ever meet. He's like a man with a fork in a world of soup. The best part of this, though, is that literally a decade later, 10 years after the fact, Liam retaliates by posting a video of himself eating soup with a damn fork. Comedic timing at its absolute best. And the level of pettiness between these two is just, it's unmatched, it's unrivaled. I'm jealous of it. And then finally, on August 28th, 2009, the band is set to take the stage at a festival in Paris when moments before they were supposed to take the stage, the brothers had a major falling out with Noel issuing a statement on the band's website just hours after they were supposed to take the stage, saying, It is with some sadness and great relief I quit Oasis tonight. People will write and say what they like, but I simply could not go on working with Liam a day longer. He would then go into more detail about what the hell exactly transpired a couple years later when he was doing a press conference for his then-new band, Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds, saying, for whatever reason, he went to his own dressing room and he came back with a guitar and he started wielding it like an ax. I'm not fucking kidding. And I'm making light of it because it's kind of what I do, but it's a real unnecessary violent act. And he's swinging this guitar around and he nearly took my face off with it. It ended up on the floor and I put it out of its misery. There were people who were in the band not saying anything, kind of looking the other way. It wasn't even a big dressing room. And I was like, you know what? I'm fucking out of here. And at that point, the tour manager came in and said, five minutes. I kind of got in the car and I sat there for five minutes and I just said, fuck it. I can't do it anymore. In the years since the breakup back in 09, both Gallagher brothers have gone on to do their own things with Null doing high flying birds, like I mentioned, and Liam starting a new band pretty much right after Oasis split. Uh, he started it with the other members of Oasis called BDI, which lasted until 2014 until he went solo. Obviously, throughout the years, the two have also traded an extremely unhealthy amount of insults towards each other, with Liam frequently referring to his brother as a potato, uh, which is a whole nother video in and of itself. And there's been a, a million rumors over the last 10, 15 years, uh, really since the band split, about Oasis finally reuniting. And here we are now in 2024, and it's finally happening, albeit in 2025. That said, though, can the Gallaghers actually make it a whole year of playing nice and actually deliver on this reunion and not implode? 
At the moment, there's only a handful of shows announced, all of which are taking place between the UK and Ireland, but the band has already said that a number of dates are already in the works for the remainder of the world, with some of the US dates already leaked, if you know where to look. So they're really gonna have to hold it together for a solid year and a half or so. I will say though, that alongside the announcement of the reunion, they also released some new photos of the two brothers together in the same room, which has not happened for many, many years. And obviously they're both still alive and they likely won't have to be in the same room uh, together for quite some time, at least another seven, eight months or so until rehearsals begin. Uh, and not to mention, God only knows the exorbitant amount of money that they are both going to make from this reunion. And we all know that money talks. So I'm sure that uh, they'll at least make it to the first show after that first show, or even during that first show though, uh, you know, what's gonna happen, uh, who knows, only time will tell. One last thing I wanna point out is that according to a source close to the band, you know, look, Liam has obviously uh, been wanting to do this reunion for some time now, been very vocal about wanting Oasis to get back together, posting about it online and all that. According to the source though, one of the reasons that Noel has finally agreed to do this reunion is seeing how well Blur did on their comeback in 2023. And if you're unaware, the two bands had quite a bit of uh, bitter rivalry back in the day. So it's safe to suggest that not only are the Gallaghers extremely competitive with each other, but with their peers as well. All right, though, I got to run because today is going to be the day that I slide away inside my fiance's wonder wall. So I got to go. But thanks so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more. And I will see you next time on The Logan Show.